It's uh, 80 years tomorrow afternoon since I first went to a Saturday meeting. I was four years of age, so guess how old I am. <laughs> and uh, I remember 60 years ago spending an afternoon with the most distinguished woman preacher in the world. Her name was uh, Catherine Booth. She was the daughter of the founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth. But just a few uh, weeks ago, I spent uh, some time, my precious Martha, with a woman that I think is the most anointed woman in the world today. She hasn't looked, she doesn't own a penny. She hasn't got two dresses. Nobody on her staff owns a car. She lives in a room 15 feet by 15. A bathroom is four feet by four with a toilet there. She has a, a little tap, a, a drip of water as big as your finger. She catches water in it and warms it, puts some soap on her head and throws the water over her head and that's the shower she has. The Queen the other day, when she was in, uh, where was she, in Miami, <coughs> she didn't drop in to see us, but anyhow, she helped Mr. Sh what, what do you call him, Schwarzkopf? Schwarzkopf? Can't say it. She gave him a knighthood. Well, she doesn't give that to ladies. She gives them an MBE, a member of the British Empire, and she gave that MBE to Jackie Pullinger, who I think is the most anointed woman in the world today. I mean, to listen to her. We started our meeting with 2,500 people. In three days, we had 9,000 people there in the civic center in Anaheim. And uh, she just reduced the whole place to tears and brokenness. There was no thunder and shouting and drawing and voting and all that business. But one thing amongst others that, she, that, that really stuck in my heart was this. Uh, she said there's only one place in the world where today they're having revival. Do you know where it is? In America. God's left America long ago. We million dollar crusades and nothing happens. We've had million dollar crusades for 25 years. You can't tell me one city that's had revival through them. We have 500 evangelists in America. We don't have one revivalist. Evangelists seek popularity. Prophets shun it. The thing was this. Well, she said, uh, they're having revival in China. Okay. And this is a country, remember, that Mr. Bush is trying to get us to link up with. And she says, our young people, look at these young ladies here tonight. They go down the street, they go to a gospel meeting and disappear and they haven't been seen since. The communists keep gathering up truck, uh, van loads of young people and take them away. They disappear. No politician is going to say that. I'd tell Mr. Bush if I got half a chance. But we want some cheap cotton or something from over there. We've nothing to take over there. In fact, some of the people over there say, don't bring us American evangelism. One man said recently, young Americans come over here, they show it, they bring their guitars, they sing for three days, and back they go to America and live in luxury. But Jackie, you stayed with us. And she said, that, I'm looking at the walls. She said, uh, a man came out of prison recently. He'd been there 27 years for preaching the gospel. And when he came out, his, his face was the color of the wall. He had been in solitary confinement for years. And uh, people sent news ahead, he's coming back to his village. He didn't have a Bible under his arm. He didn't have a little cassette. He just walked down the village street and the whole village came and repented. They knelt in the street and cried to God. There's a Christian. There's a man who for 26 years has been in prison. He's been beaten. He's been without food. He's been, without, he's been in solitary confinement. And yet the glory of God is on him. You see, we want to get the glory of God by coming to a meeting. She almost scorns those of us who go from meeting to meeting to meeting. I tell you, when I listened to that woman, I felt like, well, I have to follow her preaching, as a matter of fact. And I've never felt as, uh, well, I always feel unworthy preaching anyhow, but to follow that amazing woman, I'll tell you how it happened. She was English, as you would imagine, 
and uh, she said to her vicar in the Church of England, I'm tired of giving a dollar for missions, I'm tired of stand up, sit down, say a prayer, do something, what shall I do? And off the cuff he said, get on a boat and wherever it stops, get off and stay the rest of your life. She did that. Nineteen years of age, playing a classical oboe in the, what do you call it, the um, Philharmonic there. And uh, <coughs> little thinking that what that uh, old bow was going to mean anyhow, uh, let me say this, <coughs> she got on the boat, it stopped here, it stopped there, stopped at Singapore, stopped somewhere else, then it stopped in Hong Kong and she got off the boat, she was 19 years of age, she's still there at 44. She goes to the guttermost. Martha said to her in our house, uh, Jackie, what's the most difficult thing you've had? She smiles so sweetly and she said, Martha, I'm a very public person. I love people, I love people, but I love quietness. My biggest difficulty when I went to Hong Kong was to share my bedroom for 18 years with prostitutes. Sometimes 12, 12 of them on the floor, sometimes half a dozen men, sometimes criminals, the most wicked men that there are. But she so lived there that people say, if you want to see a Christian, go see Jackie. I say, when I was talking to her, I was thinking when I, I sat with the uh, daughter of William Booth, uh, she was about 20 years of age, she wasn't very really athletic, she had a curvature of the spine that she inherited from her mother, and William Booth, of course, used to kick everybody to the ends of the earth, but he said to his children, don't you go. So Catherine, the second Catherine, said, I'm going to France. She went to the underworld of France and rented a building there, and within three weeks had revival. Professors from the Sorbonne were there, these long-bearded wise men of the world. Prostitutes were there. Men would come to the altar, take daggers out of the socks, take guns out of the socks, and kneel there and weep. And here these titled ladies of England left their stately homes. You see, there's one thing that's more attractive than anything, and on God's name I tell you this, you never have to advertise a fire, whether it's in a man, whether it's in a church, whether it's in a community. All we need is men and women on the fire. We don't need more money. We don't need more organization. We don't need broken, bankrupt actors to come and sit on the platform of our conferences. Forget it. Let's go back to God. Well, there's my introduction. Shall I preach now? <laughs> I could talk all night about Jackie, but I won't. Let me give you a text and uh, 